but the root of what makes you you, the nature that you are, God takes that out. It's like Iron Man, you know, he just takes that core thing out and puts a new one in. And it's a new heart. And it's a new spiritual identity. You become a different kind of being. You go from being dead in your sin to alive in Christ, even if nothing else changes in that moment. You, in this new heart, has the laws and the ways and the logic of God. It has a tuner inside of it that picks up God's voice constantly. I made that part up just so you know. Scripture doesn't actually say that. But you know his voice because you become his child. Amen? Amen? And so if you could just, like, get a brain transplant at the same time, that's really what needs to happen. (laughs) That's what should have happened, Lord. If we were God, see, this is what we would do. (laughs) Because you still think the same way, and that's your problem. That's my problem. That's our problem. We still think the same way. And so then we start dumping a bunch of junk right back on top of that brand new heart. But see, if we could learn to live from our heart... I'm going to geek out on you for a minute. I was reading this book, and actually it goes back to Max Planck in the 30s who developed this idea of quantum physics and that there was a quantum field that acts differently than the observable physical plane. Like, stuff happens on the quantum field that doesn't make sense. Then they started doing some research off of his research, and they found that your actual physical heart has neurons. And they've developed this new area of science that's kind of It's still subjective now, but it's called neurocardiology. And they're saying that there's a little brain, in other words, brain-like function in your heart. Your heart, physical heart, actually thinks. And it actually puts out more energy. Like when you think a thought, there are are, uh, energetic... Yeah, well, the synapses run the patterns, but there's actually energy that comes off of your thoughts. In other words, they put a scan. You've seen those brain scans, right? I'm going to try to tie this all together. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> but what they're measuring is the energy that's coming off of your thoughts. Incidentally, a positive thought energetically is 100 times stronger than a negative thought. Amen. Right. So for every 100 negative thoughts, make sure you cancel it out with a positive thought. So you can get really weird because some people will say then that that energy is going out into this field and it's actually causing this created field out here to respond to you. Now, I believe that on some levels. You reap what you sow, you know. But your heart, the neurocardiology function that mirrors brain function energetically and chemically and other things, that is the strongest energetic force in your body, your heart. And you actually think with your heart. What they're, te- what they're saying in neurocardiology is that you're, it's like your heart being at the center of your body kind of analyzes your entire body, and it's, what makes the brain the brain is it, it sends messages to the rest of your body to do stuff. And everything else is a receiver. Well, they're learning that your heart actually sends messages to your brain. It's like your heart because it has neurons, is analyzing what's going on in your physical body, and it will send messages to your... They've tracked all this electrically. It sends messages to your brain, and then your brain actually responds to the information your heart is sending it. We don't believe that, but we don't have faith. Now, that's just physical. So you tie this together, right? And this is, you know, you kind of have to have some creative license because this is where the Holy Spirit has to tie this together, and we could make a bunch of stuff up. You know what I mean? But I want to be real about it. I don't exactly understand the parallels, but we know that the heart that God talks about is the same word that when it talks about your physical heart in the Word of God, it's also the same word when it talks about your soulish or your spiritual heart. So there's some kind of correlation there. There's some kind of spirit, body, soul connection there with the function of your physical heart as it relates to your soulish, spiritual heart. In other words... You believe with your heart unto righteousness. Out of your heart flow all the issues of life. Now, is that physical? Is that soulish? Is that spiritual? I don't really care. That's not the point. I don't, you know what I mean. With, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, physically, you understand that your physical heart is 
analyzing what's going on in your body, sending messages to your brain, your brain responds. But so is your soulish or your spiritual heart. It kind of analyzes everything because your beliefs live within your heart. Now, if you can, your, your heart is like directly connected to God's spirit, this new heart. It's why he gives you a new one because you need to be able to hear him. You need to have a connection. And this process is also when you go through the process of the proper type of cleansing to make you holy. So that's what holiness is, is it doesn't have dirt or death or the things touching it. Like in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, if you were to touch a dead body or bodily fluids or something like that, it would make you unholy or unclean. And so you'd have to go through the right kinds of cleansing to be holy or clean. God cleans you with His Spirit. He puts a new nature within you so that you can live in His presence and His presence can be in you, which means the deepest part of you is now holy. The deepest part of who and what you are is now clean. You live in direct connection to Almighty God. You are not outside the temple with Him behind a veil and you having to repeatedly get clean to go into that presence. No, that presence is in you. And it will touch the other areas of your life that you let Him cleanse. That's, that's where the misunderstanding of progressive holiness comes in because we've had an idea that holiness is about doing everything the right way. No, holiness is that you're not letting death creep into those areas. And if you can... Let yourself not choose death. You continually choose life. You're going to let that indwelling holiness creep out into the rest of your being. And because what you believe in your heart affects every area of your life, as the scripture says, what you believe in your heart is vitally important. More than anything, your heart affects your life. Your heart meaning the deep, your, your, who you think you are that picture that you have of yourself on the inside, where your beliefs are, what you think is possible, how confident you are in God and His promises and your place in Him. All of that is inside of your heart.